This episode of the podcast is brought to you by our friends at Regrow, the premier cloud-based cannabis supply chain management system. If you're a cannabis company searching for a strategic business partner to help you automate your business, scale effectively, and make the supply chain work for you, then you need to know about Regrow. Regrow is the first of its kind software that leverages components of leading ERP and supply chain systems with the necessary compliance of the cannabis industry. That's right, you'll get all aspects of regulatory compliance built in with the added value of workforce management, inventory, SOP management, and reporting and metrics that allow for companies to scale successfully. So stop using the whiteboard, spreadsheets, and email to manage your cultivation, distribution, and manufacturing processes, and instead incorporate Regrow. Visit their website at regrow.io. That's regrow.io. Regrow, the premier cloud-based cannabis supply chain management system. Hello, my fellow people of the plant. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Cannabinoid Connect podcast, your favorite podcast that includes industry-facing conversations with the industry's leading experts that aim to educate and inform the public regarding the plant's endless benefits. My guest today is Rena Sherbill. She's the host of the Cannabis Investing Podcast. All right. You know, that new thing is uh, that they say that the zoom voice tells you that you're recording in progress yeah that was that like shocked me at first i was like wait who is speaking and who's listening in on this yeah that's a new feature that was really strange Do, does everyone hear that when we first click record yeah i asked the person i was talking to i was like did you just hear that and they're like yeah <laughs> and i was like okay that's good i yeah, guess that weird. that is a good feature i guess right because you don't want to like sneak record and if people don't know like if you're in a meeting before you could kind of do that if they weren't paying attention in the top left corner where it said it you know right Right, right. It is it is nice. And, and even for the recorder, who hopefully you do know that you're recording. But, you know, I mean, every so often I'll be like, am I recording? And I'll like look into the, you know, like the top left corner. Same, yeah. But I feel like if there's a voice telling you that you've started and ended, then probably you'll you'll be reminded much quicker than having to check. I don't know, maybe not. No, I agree. Your brain will register it, right? Yeah. 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 But, so um... Sorry. Go ahead. No, no. I was just going to say, but I feel like those things should be alerted to users like pretty like, I don't know. I feel like that's a release that should be publicized. Like if somebody's going to be talking to you now and they didn't, nobody used to talk to you. And... <laughs> no, that would be, that would be too transparent. Yes. Rina, come on. Yes. These yes. are features that we update within the iOS and Google play app in all that long text that we don't know about, you know? Yes, exactly. Indeed. Right. Indeed. I actually have two <laughs> emails like that waiting for me. I'm like, I'm going to parse this email out. Right. <laughs> like updates and, and whatnot and things you need to know that you don't ever really know. Yep. Yeah. So before we started recording, you were saying, man, you're, you got a lot going on. You moved. So is this the new studio, I guess? Uh, or this is, this is something like the new studio. Yeah. It's been, it's been configured. Um, yeah, it, we're, we're, we've moved. We, we crossed the highway onto the east side of, of things, um, in, in a neighborhood that I had actually never been in before. Uh, we moved, but getting out of the center of things, I don't know if it's happening in Dallas also, but it's just like, it feels like every major city is having this like San Francisco moment where it's like, <laughs> we are going to just jack prices up beyond belief. Yep. And I feel like there was like a window of time where people were being empathetic, like during and, and maybe in, in variations towards the end of Corona time. But, right. uh, but damn, those times are over. It's yes. It's, it's capitalist central back back at it. We're we're running at full steam ahead. You're you're right. And yeah, prices have been up, especially gas obviously um yeah. has been has been one, but even like just kind of random goods like at the grocery store, you know, you can kind of tell. Uh so corona is definitely over, but I think that you know, we talked about the aftershocks and the after effects when it, the dust starts to settle, those are starting to kind of creep up, you know. Yeah. And also, it's not over everywhere. I mean, in Canada, it's not over. Oh, that's right. Yeah. In India, it's by no means over. I work with a lot of people in India, and it's uh, it's kind of like a horror story over there. So yeah, yeah. I, I apologize when I say that. I'm in Dallas, Texas, where you know what I mean. Like no, I know we live in it because we, yeah. don't, we don't see what's going on outside, and it's been such a long and arduous process for in right. Israel too. It's been like you know, Corona feels like it's over, and I. 
I remember talking to somebody that was like dealing with that. I was like, what? You're what? You're still dealing with, you know? And it's like, yeah. But and yeah. every country has kind of been in the different phase of it, right? Like it's totally. it's crazy, yeah. Totally. So I mean, there's a lot that has also gone on outside of the COVID pandemic, as specifically within cannabis, which uh, I believe that you're pretty focused on on the day to day basis. So I am pretty focused <laughs> on, as I believe you are as well. We're pretty focused somewhat, on. somewhat, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I don't know how you want to kick this off. Rina. I kind of like when you, you kind of drive it, you know, so I don't want to, I don't want to, I want to start where you want to start. What's been going you on with you? The, you want me to take the wheel, Jesus? Take the wheel. Um, yeah. <clears throat> um, let's see. What can we talk about? I mean, I feel like I released an episode today that I am very, I was very excited to release. Uh, we only recorded it yesterday and usually there's way longer time. I mean, it depends what it is, but Typically, there's there's more time between you know recording and releasing an episode, but it it was such a great talk with two analysts, um, Mike Reg Mike Reagan and, and Colin Ferry, and I, I have to plug them if I'm going to be talking about them. Um, and just talking about kind of like the deals that have been done. There was like a major deal with True Leaf. Well, you know, some might call it major, some might call it not so major. But the the True Leaf Harvest deal. Um, there's this legislation coming up, we hope, we think. <laughs> shortly, shortly, sure. yeah. Yes, shortly, shortly. Nobody's <laughs> sure exactly how shortly, nobody's exactly sure what is going to be said or deemed legal, but um, but yeah, there's like all these things to think about, um, you know, and along with legalization comes, uh, you know, there's been this tax that's on cannabis mm. companies, the 280E, and yep. what happens, <clears throat> When that's taken off, is there another tax levied in, in some sort of way? Is that money just given back to the shareholders? You know, doubtful. Just kind of, you know, when does interstate commerce open up? Like all these questions, I think, that investors are thinking about. And as you look, if you're an investor in cannabis stocks, I think you're looking across the landscape and being like, what? Why? Why aren't we doing better right now? Right. And and I know like for myself, I've been talking about cannabis stocks for like, you know, probably since I started the podcast, but really kind of on fire about it, certainly for like a, a year plus. Mm -hmm. And I would say that like at dinner parties or like at, talking to friends or some, I mean, I haven't been to a dinner party in a long time. I don't, but, but being at friends' houses. <laughs> what you mean. And yeah. Like, yeah. Talking to people. Um, you know, it's kind of like, I would say in the past like three months, everyone is interested in cannabis stocks. And I think people that weren't getting into it, even when I was telling them to get into it, like a lot of them got into it and they're like, but you told me, but you told me. <laughs> and I was like, oh man, if you had listened to me at the beginning, you would already be happy with me. Right, um, right, but, yeah. But I, I, I anyways, you, like, I feel like this is a reckoning moment. I, I feel like we are reckoning with bullish sentiment if we're bullish on the sector we're reckoning with how the legalization picture develops um how the industry keeps on evolving into the next step and i think each law kind of begets the next thought um and yeah so i i feel like i'm trying to pay a lot of attention to things and not assume that i know something just because you know i think that i've known it for this long in other words like i'm trying to rethink all the assumptions because i think there's so many things that we don't know that are in play and 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 coming um so yeah that's i think that's a great way to approach this and that's very like seasoned of you to to, to step back you know because we are so close to it day to day we're we live and breathe this stuff we're on twitter we're talking with people we're researching and sometimes when you're so close, you can get so biased and almost believe kind of what you're what you're inclined to think, right? Based off of what you're consuming. Yeah. And so obviously you can't predict the market and you're I'm right with you there. I mean, like we thought I thought there'd be some kind of momentum and traction that's happening, but um, it really hasn't. It's kind of stalled. But what I, and I, I've kind of taken the approach that you have, you articulate it much better than I would. But I, I'm just kind of sitting back and and thinking that this is a long haul, like I know that I'm in this for 10 plus years, right? And I'm not touching these investments because these are long plays. And so I'm just going to kind of let it all play out. You know what I mean? I'm not going to get caught up in the day to day kind of just, you know, hyper focusing and obsessing. Um, I have that on the other side with AMC, which is taking off today, you know, and that's a beautiful dun, thing. Dun, dun. But <laughs> yeah, but I mean, no, I, I want, I'm basically what I'm saying is I agree with you. And I think that's a great approach. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that that's investing. I think some of the obsessing can come like when you're deciding where to put your money in the first place. Right. I think like you can obsess a little bit in your due diligence. Um, but I think once you're kind of confident on, on who you think the winners are, and, and again, you know, I, we talk about this a lot, like the, the notion of investing versus trading. Um, yeah, if you're in it for the long haul, then you're in it for the long haul. And, and I've quoted him before, like Chris DeMuth, um, who's been on, on the podcast and, and a big contributor to Seeking Alpha, talks about, you know, short term looking at share prices, like chasing that high of, of, of wanting that, you know, next hit of, of a high in a share price is really just entertainment. That's not mm -hmm. investing. I mean, it could be trading, but that's not investing. So, yeah, with an eye towards the long term, with an eye towards kind of feeling um, where the thesis is going, but also along with that, I think, and what I'm trying to kind of like, you know, force myself to do more and more is to pay attention to the things that I, I maybe haven't noticed or have brushed aside or are just developing now, you know, mm -hmm. that, that we haven't um, kind of known that it was going to go this way in, until now. Right, right. And, you know, as maybe for those that are just kind of tuning in or, or first time listeners of either your podcast or, or Cannabinoid Connect, le you know, let's talk about because I get this question a lot, especially in Twitter, like, who, who are your long bets? You know, who are your you know, what's in your portfolio? Like, mm -hmm. so I mean, whether you want to share that Rena, or just talk about kind of what your what your who what companies you're looking at? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure people would love to hear it. Yeah, so I'll tell you what I was telling my mom's boyfriend the other day. We've been t I've been telling him to get into cannabis stocks for a long time, for like a couple of years at least. Um, and then he's like, okay, I'm, I'm getting into something. I, I have $5,000, I'm getting into something. And so I gave, I started like rattling off names. I started with like my, my top picks, which are True Leave and Air, Air, Air Wellness, AYR. Mm -hmm. um, and, and as I started going on, he's like, give me three. Just give me three. <laughs> Let me get my money on three. Everything else is overwhelming. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I feel you. So I set my top three, my number one and number two, it's like my friends that follow fish in the dead. They're like <clears throat> my number one and my number two. I'm not sure which it is. I would right. say truly even air wellness or, or my top two. I feel like the, I, I've talked about them a lot on my podcast. I've talked about them before on your podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, in terms of picking management that, that seems to have a sense, a strong sense of, of where they're going, um, you know, really strong corporate governor, governance, managing the money well, um, smart deals. Uh, Truly did this deal that I mentioned with Harvest, so they have kind of, they, they've had a, a long ownership of the Florida market, a strong ownership of the Florida market. Now they're more into Arizona also going to be into Pennsylvania and, and some places on the East Coast and also kind of surrounding areas. But I love Kim Rivers. I, I love what she's done at True Leave. I, I love what they're doing. I love their ethos as a company. Air Wellness, John Sandelman, um, I, I've had him on the show a few times. With Air Wellness, I love what he's doing. And then he has this other play in California, which is, is not directly Air Wellness. It's Mercer Park. I, I think I may have talked about this last time I was on the show. Um, yeah. It's a SPAC that, that did a deal with Glasshouse Farms, which is a, a strong grower cultivator in, in uh, the Santa Barbara area. Um, but I sense, and if you follow, I know you follow some of the same people on Twitter, you know, lots of rumblings about how Air and Mercer Park and Glasshouse are going to come together to form, I don't know, form or do or whatever, however it looks. Um, but I believe in those managements those management teams, I, I believe in the strategies. Um, didn't, didn't uh, the parent company just invest 50 million in Glasshouse Farms also? Yes, like, exactly. wow, there's like a yes. lot going on. And last time we talked, we were kind of talking about the, the Godzilla and King Kong in California. And it was the parent company and, and Mercer Park, right? So now it's like, they're almost working together, I guess, to tackle maybe the New York market. I don't know. Or like, who knows how it plays out, you know, kind of there's like a fragmentation in the California market. And is there room for two monsters? You know, is there is there room for two people kind of doing different different sides of, of, of the of, of kind of the landscape, you know, like one focusing on, on, on certain avenues and, and certain products and certain brands and, and another focusing on another. But but yes, being 
being part of Glass House, I think it definitely makes the curiosity even stronger. And I don't know if you saw this, but Michael Orbach, who's the chairman of the parent company, he tweeted, um, I've had him on my show and he's talked about like laying Easter eggs and like laying hints <laughs> for things that he's about to do. And he said after the Glass House parent company deal came out that the ticker for the parent company, which is G-R-A-M-F, he says was an Easter egg trying to get Graham Farrar who's the founder of Glasshouse No Group. way. Oh, my God. Yeah, I was like, dude, gosh. this is like, this goes, you know, I, you know what, I love that. That's like, amazing. That is yeah. amazing. I thought Gram F was like, I thought they were trying to go with like a gram, a gram of weed or a gram, of, you know, a gram. Uh, yeah. And, but wow, Gram F, that is, that's awesome. That's yes, so cool. yes, yes. That is laying it on thick and sweet. Yeah. <laughs> and he's a legend. I mean, he's a living legend. I've talked to Graham and yeah. he is just so knowledgeable and sharp, you know, both in business and, you know, in cultivation and growing. I mean, he's, he's really got it all. And um, yeah, that's so cool. <clears throat> yeah. And also, I mean, if we can speak about that for a minute, because I think it's worth speaking about because I think, yeah. People interested in cannabis investing, I mean, California is the most mature market. It's the most developed market. It has the biggest, you know, business opportunity. Um, you know, I've heard people say, if you win California, you're going to win the landscape. I'm not sure if that's 100% true, but I think it's somewhat true. Um, but to your point about Graham, I think two things. One, um, you know, I've had him on. He has this deal with Cadiz, which is, you know, a totally non-cannabis touching company all about water sustainability and agriculture and he has this hemp deal with them um and i just feel like that's such a good head start in terms of knowing how to scale growing and production right um so i feel like that's one head start that not everybody is talking about uh we were talking yesterday when we were recording that episode that maybe that's going to be talked about like when the ipo is announced um, cause it is some strong bra background that he's bringing. And the other point that I'll me mention is that I did this webinar last October, um, and it was about California and cannabis and the people on the panel were like, oh yeah, Graham, we have your stuff in, in, uh, you know, in our bag or whatever right here. And I was like, that's awesome. Like <laughs> people in the know are telling somebody in the know that like they're who you use. So you know that that's good cannabis and quality and which is what the market's looking for. I think that's the other right. thing I'm thinking about, which is like where cannabis is going and what's the, th and I would say like, I don't know if you would agree with this and, and what you're seeing like um, where you are in, in your circle of friends and, and colleagues, but, but I feel like the premium high quality flower is definitely gonna be like a huge play in the market. No doubt, no doubt. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Especially for people who have consumed the plant by smoking for a long time right? right like within the illicit market now that it's legal in states where it's adult use they're always um and we had a talk about this with uh, jeremy burke actually from insider and he mentioned also know. yeah he mentioned also that like the preferred kind of you know method is is flour that that boutique high quality flour and i agree with you and california is going to really jump on that because they've been doing it for so long yeah yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, you know, so like w there's been a lot like you mentioned at the beginning with like legislation that's been happening. Um, well, I mean, or not happening, <laughs> but talks of legislation. Um, so like I think it's interesting of what, what Chuck Schumer has done in terms of um, kind of pivoting from leading with safe banking first to now trying to tackle a more comprehensive bill. I think it makes sense um, because I'm not sure the the large uh, private institutions would be as willing to jump in head first uh, with just safe banking if cannabis is still listed as a Schedule One narcotic. What are your thoughts on that? I don't know. I was going to ask you what your thoughts since you're in the states. I mean, I feel like you know I, I think that's probably right. Like the theory behind it, why why he's doing it like that. Um, you know, safe banking still has not passed yet. That's right. that's a that's a big uh, kind of caveat on, on the whole thing. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, I think he's trying to get something passed that means something and that will also get passed. And I think you're right about the safe banking, you know, that being worked out. Um, I, I don't know. I, 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 you know, I feel like I hear different things and I, I feel like I hear different timetables, mm -hmm. um, even from them, you know, as as a. Uh, 
as Todd Harrison says, Schumer or later, they'll figure it out. But uh, you know, <laughs> I didn't see that. Did he tweet that yeah. Schumer or later? They'll figure it out. I think it was on his like weekly, uh, weekly missives. Yeah, I uh, that funny. yeah, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Um, what do you I mean, what do you think? Where are you at with it? Well, um, in addition to what I said, I think the other component that's going to be very interesting to see play out is the social equity component of the bill, because mm -hmm. there have been states that have done it one of two ways. They've included that within their more comprehensive bill, like like Chuck Schumer is talking about, or they've completely isolated that component of the bill and they've just made it as a standalone bill and pushed it through also like like my state in New Mexico, my home state in New Mexico um, that I grew up in. So I don't know. I, and just given the blue wave and how there is kind of some discrepancy within um, government in terms of the prog progressive Democrats and the more moderate Democrats, it's going to be interesting to see that particular part of the legislation play out because it's so important and it does, you know, take a lot of attention and we need to do this right. And so we'll just see kind of, I don't know, you know. It seems to me like the social, I mean, look, even when it's figured out, it's not necessarily figured out, but in terms of like what the law looks like and how it's written, I do feel, I mean, I, I hope not to eat my words, but I do feel fairly confident that it's going to be written well in terms of like people looking for a strong social equity component because it's such, it's become such a huge part of, you know, the whole kind of branding of legalizing cannabis. Mm -hmm. I think like, especially if you're talking about it coming from the democratic side, like I don't think you can get that push through without a really compelling side to the social equity. Um, so I'm not sure that that passes, you know, right. but I do, I, I do feel like it, it, it will be what comes out will be kind of compelling in that way. Right. No. And, and, you know, outside of the more comprehensive legislation, there are kind of smaller, little nuggets that I'm seeing that is, is that tells me from a 30,000 foot view that we're moving in the right direction and momentum is continuing to play out. And, and that is, I think high times came out with an article that the DEA is granting marijuana cultivation licenses for research purposes. Um, so that's huge. I know because right now what the only university I, that, that really we can do any research is at the university of Mississippi. Mm -hmm. So, and I've, and I've, from experts that I've talked to on the podcast previously, you know, they've said that that's it, the, the way that they grow is terrible. It's not as high quality as like what, you know, even the black market's doing. So they're even beh behind in that way. So at least that's good. And then I don't know if you, you heard about the, um, the Senate bill that was introduced about putting pressure on the FDA to basically include C CBD products as dietary supplements. Right. Um, so that's another thing that I think is great in terms of just like, you know, again, little nuggets that we're seeing. Yeah, I, I think that's right. And I think that that fight with the FDA has been a long time coming. Um, and I, I think that what you mentioned in terms of, you know, like the the legislation passing um, in terms of kind of like seeing the, these little you know, little nuggets, I, I, I think um, is really true. And I think it's a, a reflection of kind of where it's going, which is like slowly but surely, you know, I think mm -hmm. like these little markers along the way are evidence that it's going in the right way, if not always on the right track. Um, but I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I think that we're getting there and I think things are being marked off slowly, slowly. Mm -hmm. And I agree. I, yeah. And, you know, going back to the stocks, I, uh, I know that you've talked a lot about subversive capital and I added them on my watch list, but I don't, their ticker has kind of like faded. I haven't looked into this at all. Well, Subversive capital was the parent company. They became, they de and became the parent company. Okay. I got it. Okay. Were they, are they the ones that originated in Israel or not? So that's the subversive re and they did the deal with Canada. Okay. Okay. So that's where I'm getting confused. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So they did the deal with Candoc. And so did they, they got acquired by them? Is that it's still, they're still um, working that out. So the deal is still being as, as far as I know, this deal is still being finalized um, because they were supposed to have a ticker change and, and go on NASDAQ. Um, but I have not seen that that deal has been finalized. Got you. Okay. Yeah. I'm so glad that you clarified that. I was like, what is going on here? But okay. 
Uh, yeah, where are where they go? When the you talk, it? hey, when you talked about uh, what was it your your brother in law when you were talking about cannabis stuff? My mom's boy, my mom's boyfriend. Oh, your mom's boyfriend. Um, I got my mom actually to invest in cannabis stocks. <laughs> nice. What'd you tell her? She's never uh, been in the stock market before ever. I gave her the list, you know, of of, uh, of the traditional top five MSOs that we've talked about previously. True Leave. Um, I had uh, Green Thumb, Cresco. Cresco. I had uh, True Leave, or did I ever say True Leave? And uh, Terrasend. I also nice. told her about. Yeah. So she's she's got her you know she's got her her watch list going and she's she's getting into it so it's kind of a fun activity that we're both sharing together you know that's awesome did she buy one of them or she's still kind of sussing it out she bought uh, Cure Leaf nice so, yeah so a strong she, choice that's right yeah yeah strong choice <laughs> so what else is happening in your world world Rena like what what you other what? guests Actually, have you had wanted- on. You know what I wanted to ask you about, because I feel like you talk to so many people in the industry, like such a wide, wide berth of, of, of people in the sector from kind of like all jobs and all kind of places in the industry. I'm curious because I've been talking, I, I've been reading about this a bit. Um, and also the past couple of interviews, I've been talking about this with how difficult it, it how, how high the turnover is in the cannabis industry in terms of employment and how people that are coming like from the legacy side of things this is actually something i'm really excited to talk about and something that i have coming up on the podcast um as i preamble my question i will just say so so kind of like one of the things that i've been thinking about is this notion of moving from the legacy part of cannabis to the industry you know like the business where we're evolving into presently um and i think it's interesting to think about like the people that are coming from the legacy side of things and how it is for them, how difficult it is for them. And I feel like I've been talking to people and hearing from people that people that have like the growing knowledge or the science background, sometimes it's not always valued in the way that it should be. Um, And not even necessarily like by just business people, but by like anybody running the company, it's just not like they're not being paid, you know, equitably for for what they're bringing to the table. so a i have like i have somebody coming on the show on on friday i i'm starting the series like leg- people from the legacy um kind of highlighting them and, and talking to them that but I'm is curious, awesome like, what? <clears throat> that's yeah, a great idea awesome. i'm really yeah. yeah thank you i i i was i'm really excited about it and i had my first conversation with somebody today and it was like just super inspiring like just kind of just growing with the plan and understanding and and not being angry about kind of like what's happening, but understanding that a lot of it is good um, and just kind of like trying to figure out your place in it. Anyways, it made me very inspired in terms of like the cannabis community and like and, and everything. Um, yeah. But do you find that do you find that like a lot of the people that you talk to share those experiences or, or talk about that in some way? Um, I not as much, to be honest with you, I think that there is like, not in the sense that they don't feel valued, because like, their, their knowledge and what they do is, is, is required, right? It's definitely needed. And especially you need to to grow a high quality product, like we talked about earlier, boutique flower to sell that, right? So I think that the new, the new professionals coming in, Um, they see that, but there's this power struggle. There's in some cases, there's this like um, not as willing to work together and it's happening on both sides. Like, you know, we hear it. um, I've heard on my podcast, you know, where they talk about these new professionals coming in and the legacy operators are just not, not feeling valued in the sense of being at a seat at the table. Right. And being able to, to be a decision maker or kind of share their experience from previous years of operating. And I think I think that that also happens on the other side as well with the legacy operators in some cases because these new entrants are coming in that have a different and diverse skill set, and they think that they're trying to come in and take over, or they they think that they know more than they do, and they're two completely different activities that are happening here. You know, maybe this is more business focused, and this is more cultivation focused. So I think that we're still in this weird pattern of figuring out. 
and, and working together and kind of talking to one another to understand roles and responsibilities and where everybody adds value. And that's, that's just a learning thing, right? Because there's some states that are coming online for adult use. And then there's states that are still illicit market that are, that are, you know, barely have medical programs. So, um, but, and it's not like that in all cases in other cases, it's great. And they both, you know what I'm saying? So it's all over the place, but that's my experience. I hope that answered your question. No. Yeah. I think probably it's also true. We're probably a lot of the people that we're talking to are, you know, the good, the good people in the industry. So I feel like it's probably not a lot of their, you know, experience, but I also think that it's probably something that needs to be worked out as like the, the, the marrying of the two sides of the licit and illicit markets kind of grow together. I think it's, uh, because look, I, I feel like, and, and this is something that I've learned in two years of covering the space is that like to be a successful player, you need to have both. You need to have right. the business side and you need to have the growing, the science, the, all that background. Like you can't just have great corporate governance and expect to make it in the cannabis industry. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, I hope that the good players keep winning out. And, and I feel like from the people that I've talked to, the companies that don't treat those employees well end up learning some kind of, you know, hard lesson, either either financially or like, you know, um, a bunch of people leaving the company. Yeah. And that's like a MedMen was an example of that. Right. Yeah, or, totally. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, I guess to take a step further in my personal experience, like we talked about how I recently launched um, my uh, consulting and brokerage business. Well, I've noticed that like a lot of these conversations where deals happen are within Facebook groups or like messaging groups or just places where people can build community because it's restricted to promote, you know, ads and all this, there's all kinds of restrictions within, you know, their, their pages within social media. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, there's a sense of like, like, because of the lack of regulation, like particularly in hemp and even, even in cannabis THC, in some cases federally that, it's it's there's been so many bad actors that have entered the space that people have really gotten burned in a lot of different deals. And so right off the gate, if you're a new kind of player and you come in and you're saying you can add value in certain services or certain ways, people they're they're I've gotten the kind of impression that they're a little skeptical at first up front because they're like, well, who's this guy? What's his intention? Yeah. You know, and uh, it, and that's fair. I get it. You know, so there it takes a, an intro meeting. It takes you know building relationship to get to know those people so that they understand that you're you're coming from a good place. But that is something that I've definitely noticed. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense, and I think good on them for being cautious. Yeah, it, yeah. It be, it behooves them to be cautious. They should be cautious. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, because again, it's the wild, wild west right now. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Rena, what else? Come on, keep 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 uh, driving this here. You're doing a good job of keeping it going. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Um, let's see the legacy, the California, the legislation. Uh, what else do we have going? I, yeah, talk to me. Well, if you need help, I got a random one to help okay, you. Go. Okay, so uh, uh, unidentified aerial phenomenon. Oh, I saw that you're into this. So I what's going on there? There's a lot of a lot of why exposure. Don't you educate, why don't you educate me? I feel like you probably know a lot more. I, I don't. I'll, all I know from the outset is that we're being more open with this. Governments are talking about it. They're releasing declassify or they're declassifying materials and documents. I, is I just this think... because you were born and raised in New Mexico? Does it come? Is there a special affinity from that? Maybe, maybe inherently there is. I just kind of am a curious person by nature. So if you yeah. talk about like the deep bottom of the ocean or like what's all in space, I'm just like, what's out there? What what's yeah. going on? You know? Yeah. yeah. And I just, I just think it's, I think it's fascinating first and foremost. And I just think it's interesting that um, there's so much exposure around it now, you know? Yeah. Look, I think the world is in an interesting place. I think it seems like everywhere you turn, it's being disrupted, like old ways of thinking, old ways of getting, you know, media, old ways of communicating, everything is just being reconfigured. Um, you know, I also like, I, I, along with the cannabis investing podcast started the show on seeking alpha uh ceo interviews that I'm, I'm moving away from doing the interviewing but i've i've interviewed a ton of people just in like a couple of months and like a broad spectrum of sectors and and something i've really learned it's really like 
solidly in me at this point is successful companies right now across every single sector are disrupting their sector. Mm -hmm. It's not like, oh, in the tech sector, oh, innovative cannabis company. It's every company in the luggage sector, in the, whatever you're looking at, right. they're disrupting it with some kind of technology, some kind of new innovation. So I feel like we're talking about UFOs. Yeah, of course we're freaking talking about UFOs. <laughs> we were all holed up in our house for over a year. Like we need something else to think about and talk about. And yeah, another world and different life forms sounds goddamn nice. <laughs> like, so timing, you know. it's timing. That Yeah, no, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. there's got to be something out there better. We, we, you know, let's get out of our own reality for a second. Yeah, yeah let's disrupt this norm. It's enough already. This is, this, we've We've done this. That's a great point. Human 2.0. Right, right. <laughs> hey, well, yeah. you know what else I saw, um, and and I think I tweeted about this also was the Delta Eight bands. Have you seen with that that what's been going on there? I've heard about it. Talk to me about it. I, I've I've heard a, lo a little bit about it. Yeah, it's just that I'm seeing more and more states. I think they're up to 14 states now that have completely outlawed. Um, Delta eight and and Texas being included in one of them. They haven't formally announced that yet, but from what I've heard in the grapevine, because they're currently in legislative session, that um, it wasn't included in the House bill. It went to the Senate and they slipped it in. They included Delta eight um, as total THC and and uh, because there was a bill that passed HB two five nine eight or nine three. Um, that reduces the penalty for, for THC concentrates. So, you know, there's decriminalization uh, legislation happening, but Delta-8 was included in the ban. <laughs> I know, that yeah. little wins in Texas, you know, we got to yes. take them. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's interesting, like big states like Texas, because there's like, you know, there's a certain liberalness, a certain libertarianism maybe, mm -hmm. but then there's also this real conservatism yeah. Do you feel like it's like those forces constantly at odds with each other? I do. I, I definitely liberalism and libertarianism in the major cities like, you know, Dallas, obviously uh, Austin. Um, it's just like natural, like any big city. Right. But um, it's so red in the other smaller counties and municipalities that um, that's really where the, the stronghold, I guess, is in some cases, you know. And yeah. so. Um, I, I was actually really surprised, to be honest with you. I, I thought I was always, I guess, optimistic that Texas was a state that, um, while red, really just liked to generate capital, right, and, and, and boost the economy and, and probably seeing neighboring states or just hearing from other states where they've generated so much tax revenue from cannabis. I thought for sure that they wouldn't let that pass up. But See, what I've seen thus far, I mean, there have been wins and I don't want to discredit those and it's a good move forward, but um, it's been a fight. I know there's been a lot of people that have been doing a lot of hard work to get these uh, officials to to really change you know, some policies and they've done well, but we still have a long ways, you know. So do you feel like it's a matter of kind of just like changing the dynamic, changing the, the mood? Like, I'm curious how much data, the, the data and research that's being produced now, how much that changes, you know, legislators, politicians minds, and how much it's just a matter of just like, they need to be forced to do it by the will of the people. That's a really good question. I don't know how much data we're using. Um, I, I don't, I couldn't answer that. Cause I, I mean, I haven't been on the front lines like a lot of these advocates in Texas, you know, um, but I know that there is strong, strong momentum on the ground floor when when people are showing up to these sessions and speaking in front of these senators and whatnot. So that's definitely happening and the calls are being made. Um, but that's a great point about data because that could just really probably help even further the movement and the progression, you know? Yeah, I mean, and I know a lot of companies that do that when they're, you know, whether they call it, you know, being activists or lobbyists, I, I feel like that's, a, you know, the best way to approach this is, is always with data, I feel like, in research, because that convinces get, that convinces people where, you know, kind of emotional pleas do not. Right, right. Yeah. And I mean, there's so much data we could pull, right, from like, like we talked about economic impact, or even like medicinal benefits, or even the potential for like industrial hemp. I've, I think I've said it before, like Texas is, 
is in prime position to be a leading state when it comes to industrial hemp producing for fiber and herd, you know, so. Absolutely. They probably also want to make it easier on college students to buy weed. I don't know if they've thought about that. <laughs> that would, yeah, that would be another great thing. You know? But yeah. they did they did pass alcohol to go and you can now carry a firearm without a license. So so there you go. Progress another way. There you hey, go. Yeah, we're going hey. like this, you know, <laughs> so. <laughs> You know, what can you, well, speaking of, you're not an NBA fan, are you? Not really, you, no. You're not following the Mavericks. They just had a really nice win last night. Oh, I, I didn't watch the game. So I, I'm, I want to say I'm kind of following because I went to a restaurant with friends in a bar and we watched the game. So I'm kind of like watching from the outside on in, the internet. But um, it's cool. I, I, I guess I'm a bandwagon fan when it comes to your home city team yeah. being in the playoffs, you know. So, so go yeah, Mavs. Yeah. yeah, go Mavs, indeed. They're showing off. They're playing really nice. Yeah, if I may speak from the outside, they're playing uh, surprising a lot of people. Yeah. Are you a basketball huge, fan? Huge, huge, huge. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huge I didn't basketball. know this about you. Yeah. What What's your favorite team? Or who's your favorite team? Well, the Bulls. I mean, I'm a Chicago gal, but uh, a huge Warrior fan also. I feel like Steph Curry is yeah. uh, a righteous person walking on this earth. He's so awesome. I, I get amazed by those videos that I see the clips on like ESPN or on social media where he's just draining those threes. He's a machine. He is like an AI robot. Doesn't miss. Yes, yes, yes. he is. He's like a video game. He's like a video game. Yeah. Yeah. Did yeah. you play when you were younger? Yeah, very much like my whole childhood. And then uh, up until college, I was going to go to uh, I think I talked about this with you. I was going to go to I a division yeah. three basketball school. And instead, I just was like not i'm not doing basketball anymore that's it you made the decision i'm gonna become a a big time podcaster in that's the cannabis right. space that's right i was like i can't <laughs> i can't risk the bodily harm because i see podcasting in my future and i need everything to like be working right, right. i have to like reach the mic you know right yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's too much rena tell me what you're looking forward to um you know any podcasts you got like what what's happening in your life well, I'm really looking forward to this legacy episode that's coming up uh, Friday because it's Memorial Day weekend. So I'm going to have a nice double double week because uh, we released an episode today and then we're releasing one Friday um, with this legacy operator. And, and I'm very excited to be kind of bridging that gap and, and talking about it and, and amplifying voices that I don't think are included in these discussions always mm -hmm. about kind of where the industry is going and, and where it should be going. Um, so that that is one I'm very excited about. Um, and we have some great episodes coming up if you are including the one we released today in, in terms of if you're looking at how to invest in the cannabis space. Like, honestly, we're having episode three of a master class in cannabis investing, which is one of my favorite. Uh, we've had two master classes and this is our third. Um, have some fun episodes and, and some fun CEOs also coming up of some of your favorite MSOs, but Ooh. I won't divulge more than that. But to to be to, to be announced uh, more. But but yeah, many many shows coming up. Very nice, very yeah. nice. How about and, you? What are you uh, What are you excited about that you have coming up? What do I have coming? Let me look at my schedule here. Okay, so I am very excited because I'm talking to you today. So that um, is that was here. Um, yeah. I'm also talking to the CEO of CBDMD soon, Marty uh, Sumacrast. Oh yeah, I just talked to him. Nice. I yeah, did. That's I, awesome. Yeah, I saw that you did. I'm actually going to definitely tune into that um, as a way, as one way to help me to pre prepare. So um, yeah. Yeah, he's great. Yep. And uh, really, honestly, I'm in the mode of actually just booking more podcasts for the month of June right now. So. Um, I won't drop the name of this individual, but I, I will have a former uh, NFL star on, on the podcast uh, as well as oh. others. So it's going to, it's going to make for, Can a really I, good... were they on the giants or it's somebody else? I, I don't want to release that information. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. <laughs> I'll tell you after we, we are done recording. No, I, I can, I can stay curious like everybody else. That's fine. It's good for the soul. Okay. No, and then and that's, that's exciting. That's exciting. That's good stuff. Yeah. And then um, I, the other thing that I'm really excited about is I 
have entered the uh, e-commerce space with uh, hemp products. So my company just launched an online store, which is very exciting. We're doing um, dropship with a partner out in um, Colorado who produces very, very high quality hemp. So That's awesome. Products. Yeah, you said yeah. that you were working on getting that figured out. Yeah, it was a long, it was a long time coming, and I I totally get the struggle that these operators talk about on on my podcast and your podcast and and everywhere else, right? Because it is insane the the regulations and the the hoops that you have to jump through. But um, we're excited, you know. So it's just it's just That's an, awesome. another way for me to gain experience in the industry outside of just talking about it every day. So. <laughs> Yeah, man, you've got your you've got your hand in kind of every part of the industry. It's awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm all in, Rena. Like I told you before, like I just I totally believe in this industry and the uh, the the benefits, the value that it brings economically, medicinally, and environmentally, and um, it just makes me a better person. So I'm I'm excited. I know it's we're still in the the early phases, but it's just only going to continue to grow. You know. Absolutely. Absolutely. I yeah. will I will end it with this tidbit that I learned recently that I was talking to somebody that the company Cito used to focus on cannabis and they pivoted and now they focus on saffron. And in the days before I talked to him, I just had a juice. I had a cold and I had a juice with saffron and it like it, it crazy. It, it helped my cough and, and my congestion. And I found out like all these health benefits of saffron. I had no idea. So lovers of plant and, and natural medicine. That's a new kind of uh, fun fact for, for, for your natural healing benefits. Love it. Yes. The yeah. more we can go more natural and holistic, the, it's just it's just good for us overall. You know? Indeed. Indeed. The more Beauti- you know. Beautiful way to end it, Rena, my friend. It was great to talk with you as always. As um, always. Why don't you tell everyone where they can find you to follow you on social media? You can find the Cannabis Investing Podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts. You can find CEO interviews on Seeking Alpha. You can still find it on YouTube. You can find me on Twitter um, or on LinkedIn or on Seeking Alpha. I am different places at different times, but you can find me and I'd love to hear from you. Um, Kevin, I, I really appreciate always coming on the show. And more than that, I always enjoy it. So thank you very much as always. Likewise, I really enjoy it as well. I look forward to talk with you again and keep blazing the trails. You too, my brother. You too, my brother. All right. We'll talk to you later, sister. All Bye. Right. Bye, Kevin. Bye.